Welcome to Programming Knowledge. This is the first video of MySQL for beginner series. So before going into MySQL, let us first understand what is a database. A database is nothing but a collection of information that is organized so that it can be easily accessed, managed and updated. The reason I am saying here organized is because if we do not store data in organized manner, then it will be very difficult at the time of retrieval of the data. So how we store this data? We store this data in a table format which has rows and columns. And DBMS, the database management system, is a software that interacts with the end users, applications and the database itself. In here, MySQL is a nothing but a database management system. Here is one example of a small database. Here the name of the database is college. As you can see, it has two tables named student and a teacher. Student has three field or say column, ID, name and age. And these are the rows. 101 ID, mark name, and age is 21. This is the data which we store in student table. And the right hand side, the teacher table has column ID, name, and subject that teach. ID is 402, Zach, and the subject he teach is physics. So, it is the small example of a database. So, let us come to the MySQL. MySQL is a fast and easy to use relational database. Relational database means the data that we store in the database are relative to each other. We talk about this in very much deeper in our later videos. And it is the most popular open source database also. And we can use it with various programming languages to create more powerful and dynamic server-side application. And many small and big farms are using it currently. So, what are the features that MySQL provides? MySQL is, first of all, as I said earlier, is an open source database. It is a very powerful program, so it can handle a large set of functionality to create a rich database. MySQL is normally quicker than other databases and it supports multiple programming languages like PHP, Perl, C, C++, Java, etc. It uses a standard form of well-known SQL data language. SQL stands for Structure Query Language, the language which we use to insert, delete, update and retrieval of the data. We will see about this in very much deeper in our later videos. So, how data is stored? As I said earlier, everything will be stored in table format which is rows and columns. And MySQL server can store multiple databases. That means we can store more than one database. What are the functionality that MySQL provides us? We can create and as well as drop the database. We can create tables, insert the data into those tables. We can also update or modify the data later on. We can delete the data from the tables. With the help of select queries, we can retrieve the data in very efficient manner. And apart from all of this, there are more functionalities like primary key, foreign key, various constraints that we will see later. You can download MySQL server from this official website and we also see the installation process in various operating systems in our later videos. Thanks for watching. Hello friends, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, I will show you how to download and install MySQL Server in your Mac operating system. So first of all, you need to download MySQL Server. For that, 
open any browser write mysql here you can see mysql.com website just click on it go to downloads option here you can find various packages available for mysql server just click on mysql community edition mysql community server here you can select your operating system we select mac os and just click on the download and you can see our downloading is started here you can see the dmg file for mac operating system just click on that mysql package continue this is the license agreement agree here if you want to change the default install location then you can change it from here install uh, here uh, you need to give your mac os password next here you need to give the password for your root user for your mysql server You can also change it later on. Close. Now open system preferences. Here you can see MySQL icon. If you can see this in your computer, then it means that uh, MySQL server is successfully installed in your operating system. Just click on that. Here the green color will indicate that your server is running now. So our server is running and we want to connect it via us client so for this first of all we need to give the location of mysql server into our best profile so that every time whenever we execute mysql command from anywhere our system can recognize it so for that open your terminal and make sure you are in the home directory you need if you want to check then write pwd which is stands for present working directory and we are in home directory so write command ls hyphen al Here you can see one file dot best profile if you cannot find in your computer then you can also create one by touch command dot best profile and execute it in my computer I already created the best profile file so I just open it if you need to open base profile file then just type open hyphen t and dot base profile here uh, just copy 
this path and paste it over here I already done it before just remove it and paste it and save now close this file and close the terminal also because we need to refresh it open the terminal again now type this command in your terminal and press enter now you have to enter the password which uh, you entered at the time of the installation enter now you can see my sql command is running so if we want to see the databases we can write so databases semicolon enter and it will show the list of databases if we want to switch to a database then simply give use database name let's say mysql and our database is changed and if i give show tables then it will list out all the tables name so thanks for watching it we will see much details about mysql in our later videos hello friends welcome to programming knowledge in this video i will show you how to download and install mysql in windows based operating system so let's get start first of all open any browser now search for mysql so the first result that you see www.mysql.com click on that now go to download option Here you can see various packages. Select MySQL Community Edition. Here you can select your operating system. In our case, it will be Microsoft Windows. Here you can find various options for downloading packages. We go for MySQL installer for Windows. Go to download page. Here you can see there are two versions of MSI installer. One is of 16.4 MB and other one is a bigger one, 324.3 MB. Uh, it means that if you download uh, the smaller version, then you need an active internet connection at the time of installation. And if you want to download the whole package before the installation, then you can download the bigger version. We download the bigger version here. So click on the download. Here you can see our downloading is started. 
I just cancel it because I've already downloaded it here once you download the file just click on that it will take some time okay so mysql installer has started this is the license agreement click on the next here you can see various options for setup the first one is default developer in which uh, mysql server will be downloaded mysql cell router workbench which is just the ui based application where you can manage your server mysql mysql for excel mysql for visual studio mysql connectors examples and tutorials if you want you can download server only client only full install all included mysql products and features and you can also go for custom in our case we set it to default developer option and click on next execute and installation process is started once it finished click on next again next standalone mysql server or standalone indoor v cluster setup so we don't make any changes here just click on next this is the default port number for mysql and this is the machine development computer click on next next here give password for the root user remember the password whatever you give here we can add user username i give my name you can give whatever you want password remember this password and the password that we gave earlier both are for different purpose so i give the same password in this case but uh, they can be different okay so remember both the password here mysql 8.0 stands for version 8.0 here it says that the specified service name is already used so i'll make it 8.0.1 and click on the next execute now click on the finish button again next finish next here enter the password which you gave for the root user check next execute
फिनिश नेक्स्ट एंड स्टार्ट माय स्क्यूल वर्क पेंच एंड माय स्क्यूल शेल फिनिश So this is our MySQL shell and this is the MySQL workbench. Uh, I just uh, close this shell. So here you can go into database, connect to database. Okay. Give password for the root user. Okay. Here, how it looks like. Uh, this is the GUI where you can manage your database server for MySQL. Uh, we will see about this in our later videos so just close and go into mysql mysql server and click on the mysql command line for client password here you can see mysql is successfully installed in our windows operating system we can write show databases semicolon this is the databases um, to switch to a particular database, we can use use keyword. Let's say world. Our database has changed now. So tables. Here you can see city, country, country language tables. So this is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hello friends, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, I will show you how to install MySQL Server on Ubuntu operating system. So let's get start. Just right click on the desktop and open terminal. Now once terminal is open, type sudo apt hyphen get install mysql hyphen server and it will ask for your system password so enter your password now it asks do you want to continue just enter y
the default username is root and it asks for the password for the root user so enter the password whichever you like and again repeat the password As you can see, it will install MySQL client, MySQL server and other packages. Now write mysql hyphen u root hyphen p and press enter and it asks for the password so enter the password for the root user which you have entered at the time of installation and press enter So that's it for this video and we will see about MySQL in much deeper in our later videos. So thanks for watching. Hello friends, welcome to programming knowledge. So before go into further, let me tell you one thing that in our previous videos we talked about introduction of MySQL and how to install MySQL server on three operating system on Windows, Linux, Ubuntu and Mac OS. And there is one more thing that I need to tell you is that from now onwards, I'll be using Mac OS for our videos, but you, need, you don't need to worry about that because the process will remain same for our operating system. So in this video, we talked about how to create databases or schemas in MySQL. So let's first of all open MySQL Workbench, which is a GUI for MySQL queries and you can download it from MySQL website. So here you can see how it look like. So first of all, we need to create a MySQL connection. You can see a plus sign here. Just click on that. Now we have to provide the name for the connection that we are going to make. So just write new data you can give any connection name you want and this is the host name this is the default port number for mysql server and click on store in keychain if you are using windows then you will be seeing store in vault just click on that now enter the password which you have entered at the time of installation for the root user. And just click OK. 
now we need to configure our server so you can see configure server management just click on that continue here you can see the operating system and mysql installation type just click continue finish okay now you can see one connection is made just click on that so you can see a blank page here it is for writing your queries related to mysql and here you can see sys stands for system is the by default schemas that is created by mysql so let's create our own database here you can see create new schema in the connected server schema means basically database just click on that here you can give the name for your database let's give test you can give whatever you want and just apply now this this is the most important thing in mysql this is actually the query that software runs on the background because we are not using the terminal we are using the id integrated development environment so instead of it if we are using terminal then we have to fire this command in order to create a database so just click on apply and it says that our sql script was successfully applied to the database just close this one and apply changes to test so if we want to see our database we can see here our database test is successfully created if we click on it you can see tables views store procedures functions we will see how to create tables in our next video but in this video we only talked about databases so now if we want to create database using query then you can create on this button it says create a new sql tab for executing queries so here you can see we can write our mysql queries here so for creating database we have to fire this command create database and the name of the database let's say data test now if you want to fire this query you can see a button here it says execute the selected portion of the script so just click on that and you can see a database data test is created and if we want to make changes in here we just need to refresh it and changes that have made you can see here data test is created now uh, we want to know how many databases are there and what are they so for that we need to fire show command just write so databases again click on that button 
and you can see the list of databases that we have on MySQL server data test MySQL system test now if we want to switch to a database then we can use use command use and then the name of the database that you want to switch in let's say we want to switch to test database now you can see it applies so now we are in test database and currently test database contains no tables but if it contain any table and you want to show the tables then use show tables now it currently showing that there are no tables in our database so now we created the database but what if we want to delete the database so there's a command called drop drop then database and the name of the database so we write test and you can see uh, this green arrow indicate that it executed successfully now if you want to show the list of databases again then we need to perform this query so databases just click on that and you can see there is no test databases here because we deleted the test database so that's it for this video uh, this video we talked about how to create database how to use and basically how to drop a database and in our next video we will see how to create tables inside the databases so thanks for watching it. Hello friends, welcome to programming knowledge. In our previous video, we saw that how to create a database and how to drop a database in MySQL. In this video, I will show you how to create tables in those databases. So let's first of all uh, get the list of the database that we have in MySQL. So I just write so databases. Here you can see we have data test, information schema, MySQL, performance schema and system so now we want to switch to the data test database so write use data test so now we are in data test database and we want to create a table in this database so for creating a table just click on this icon which says create a new table in the active schema in connected server so here you can see you can give the name of uh, the table you want so let me give it student table and as all of you know that student, student is a table and a table has rows and columns so we can give the name of the column here so let's say the student has a roll number uh, 
here you can specify the data type of the data that you want to store in that column you can see integer where care decimal date time and blob data type so let's just select integer here you can see there are a couple of fields here uh, pk is stands for primary key uh, consider one case in which uh, you have a table called student and you have only two records in this table and the fields are name and surname and consider a case in which for both of the students the name and surname are the same then you cannot distinguish between those two student so there must be a field which can uniquely identify records in the tables so primary key is a field which is unique for all the records okay so roll number is unique for all these ones so we mark primary key and by default if we mark the primary key then it has to be not null because there has to be a primary key okay uh, let's insert another field called name where care and surname okay so now click on apply uh, this is the query that runs on the background let me just copy it for the future and click on apply and SQL script was successfully applied to the database now if we want to see we can just refresh it and you can see the student table is created if we want to see via query then write show tables here you can see one table is created now if we want to drop a table we can write drop table and table name and fire this query or if we want to delete a table from here sorry from here so you can just right click on it and click on drop table and it will drop the table so now show tables you can see there are no tables let me just clear it and now we want to create a table using query language so i just paste the uh, query that i copied so for that this is the syntax first of all you need to write create table and then you can specify the database which you are currently in and the name of the data na name of the table that you want to give and then brackets here you can specify the uh, columns name roll number integer is for data type not null because roll number is our primary key name where care this 45 is the length for the name and it can be null surname where care and it can be null and in lastly we specify what is the primary key for this particular table so we specify the roll number is this primary key now we can execute it and just refresh it and we can see student has been created and it has three columns roll number name and surname so via these methods you can create as many as tables in the database so 
how to insert records in these tables uh, we will see that in our next video so thanks for watching it Hello friends, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In our previous video, we talked about how to create table in MySQL. In this video, we will see how to insert data into those tables. So, uh, if you remember, we have created a database called Data Test, in which we have created one table called Student. So now let's insert some records in this table. So. To insert record in the table you just need to click uh, you just need to right click on the table and you can see send to SQL editor and here you can see insert statement just click on that so here you can see the query that we gonna run to insert the data into our table the query is insert into then the database that you are currently in dot the table that you are using and here is the column that we have defined in our student table role number name surname and then comes values and in this space we can provide the values so just erase this now we want to insert a uh, one record okay so first thing is roll number let's insert 10 then separate each value by comma name and then surname now execute this now we want to see whether this record is inserted into our table or not for that just go to your table and you can see this icon just click on that uh, this is the query that runs on the background select star from data test dot student we talk about this select query in our next video so just leave that for right now and here you can see the record that we have inserted in our table is successfully inserted roll number name and server now there are some variation of insert query just see that now consider a scenario where you don't need to insert uh, the data for all the columns uh, instead of that you want to insert data for a specific column then uh, if i want to insert only roll number and name and i don't want surname so you can just delete this surname from here and we insert another record say two and now this says that we want to insert only roll number in name just execute it and let us see here roll number name and we didn't specify this surname so it will uh, define null here now let's say consider a case where we don't need to insert roll number okay and see what happens we only uh, want to insert the name okay let's say mike here it gives an error 
if you remember in our last video when we created the student table we specified roll number as our primary key and at that time i told you that primary key cannot be null if primary key is null then we cannot distinguish between the records which have the same value so primary key must be there if we define one column as a primary key so and there is uh, also one case if we want to insert the record for all the columns that are present in the table then you don't need to specify the columns name you just specify the values let's say 14 Alex Russo Okay Execute it Here you can see Now if you want to insert multiple records at the same time then also you can do this you just need to separate each data set by a comma like 15 Lily Stark this is our one data set then insert the second data list here you can see we insert the two data set and just execute it and see the result here you can see two records are inserted so this is how you can insert into table a single record and multiple records and in our next video we will see how to retrieve the data from this table via select query Thanks for watching it. Hello friends. Welcome to Programming Knowledge. In our previous video, we saw that how to create tables and basically how to insert values in those tables. In this video, I will show you how to uh, retrieve the values from those tables. So first of all, let us see that how to retrieve values from the tables via terminal. So open terminal in your computer. Let me just make it okay. Write MySQL and you okay. provide password. Now um, just let me show you we, what are the databases that we have. Um, we have data test database here okay our we are in now data test database and uh, if you remember we have created one table called student in it let me show you here you can see stone table now we want to see uh, what are the records uh, that are present in our student table so the SQL statement for that is select star from then the name of the table in our case it is student 
so here you can see we have roll number name and surname and the values that we have inserted in the last time now consider a case where you don't need to show the surname you only require to show roll number and name so right select now uh, specify the name of the column that you want we want roll number and name here you can see now surname is no longer uh, appearing here we have only roll number and name now you can also change the order in which they are displaying on the screen right select we want name first and then roll number Mm, that's E is missing in select query. Okay. Select name, roll number, roll number. Here you can see. First it will be displaying name and then roll number. And as I saw you earlier, if we want all the columns to be displayed, then simply select start from student. So now let us see. Let's open our GUI workbench. Here we have a database called Data Test, and in which we have created a table student, and it has three columns: roll number, name, and surname. Now, if we want to display the roll number only, then just right-click on it and click on the select rows and you can see the roll number is displaying here and the query which runs on the background is select roll number from data test dot student now uh, as i mentioned earlier you can write multiple columns name here select roll number name from student here you can see a roll number and name you can write in any order select name then i want surname and then i want roll number here name surname and roll number now we want every column to be displayed then simply that select star from student here you can see whenever here uh, you can observe one thing that whenever you uh, write star instead of specifying each column name then the table uh, will appear in the same order in which we have defined uh, in our creation time roll number first then name and then surname so if you want to change the order then you have to specify the column name manually here now there is one more thing that i want to show you is that you can also perform normal arithmetic operation using the select statement i'll show you if you want to perform addition of two numbers then write select one plus three support from here you can provide a dummy name we provide dual here 
and execute you can see 1 plus 3 4 now not only this you can write a much complex equation here like into 5 plus 2 into 3 divided by 2 let's say here you can also perform modulus right 5 modulus 2 from dual yeah, you can see it will uh, give us the remainder and if you if you don't want to write table name then it's fine you can also write like this and we also give it the same output okay so thanks for watching hello friends welcome to programming knowledge in our previous video we saw that how to select specific column from a table using a select statement and in this video we will see that how to select column uh, specific column via select statement but in this scenario we only wanted distinct values so first of all let us see how to do it in a terminal so first open your terminal mysql hyphen u contain provide password now mm, let us see which are the databases that we have so we have data test database here that we have created so just use that now show tables student table and let me just show you the reports okay so we have this record um, let me insert some more record insert into student Red nice Alex okay now now here you can observe one thing that whenever we fire this query select star from student or let me just fire another query select name from student here you can see uh region is displaying two times Con is displaying two times and LX is also displaying two times. So because uh, it it shows us the multiple values, uh, but we want we don't want that. We want only distinct values. Uh, no matter how many times uh, it uh, uh, present in the database, we want MySQL Server to show it only one time. Okay. So in this scenario we can use select distinct and then name of the column 
here you can see though there are two prisons present in the database two alex as well as two con but uh, because of this distinct keyword that we have used here prison is saying only one time alex and so on so let me just close it and open open mysql workbench here <coughs> first we write select name from student and file this query so here you can see uh, there are duplications in the values uh, as I saw earlier if we want a distinct value then you just need to type distinct keyword here here you can see now let me provide what surname here then you can see uh, bridge and bridge and con is appearing also two times uh, this is happening because uh, in the surname field there are no duplications they are uh, uh, unique values for each name that we have inserted in our table so that's why it displaying all the values again it shows only distinct value so this is how you can select distinct value from your table there is one thing that you need to remember is that you cannot write distinct keyword anywhere you want in between the select statement let me show you select now id and then you specify distinct name student here you can see it gives an error and you cannot uh, uh, tell the mysql that you want all the ids but you want only distinct name then how it can manage to show in in, in the table format so you have to specify the distinct keyword in the first place okay thanks for watching it hello friends welcome to programming knowledge in our previous videos we saw that how to select specific column from a table via select statement and in this video we will see that uh, how to select specific rows in that column also we want that uh, only the specific values from a particular column will be displayed on the table so let us first see how to do it in a terminal so first of all open your terminal write mysql provide password and let's see which are the databases that we have so data test information schema mysql performance schema and system so we use data test let us see which are the tables that we have
so we have created one table student table and select star from student and we have this many records in our table so now we want that we want to show the roll number which are greater than 14 so how will we do that so write select star from student and for providing condition we use where keyword where write the column name on which you want to specify the condition in our case it is roll number is greater than 14 so you can see that only the name and surname of those students who have their roll number greater than 14 will be displaying here um, we can use various arithmetic uh, operators here like roll number 14 uh, we have a student whose roll number is 14 we can also use less than now we want to display the uh, values uh, based on the name so select star from student where name is equal to let's say bridging here you can see uh, Students who have their name is Bridgen displaying here. Now we can also write like select star from student where name and we want to display the records except that bridging so we have to specify the operator not equal to so for that we use open and close angular brackets and then we specify name and you can see here we have all the record except those two bridging and we want to specify the column then we can select only id from student where let's say name is bridging Yeah, we have a roll number here. Roll number, okay. Here you can see 10 and 12 are the roll numbers. So let's just close it and open workbench. okay so all right first of all let me show you the records uh, these are the records that we have and we want to show the records where roll number 
are less than or equal to 14. Here you can see 10, 11, 12 and 14. If we remove that is equal to sign here then this 14 will disappear. Okay. Um, we can also provide specific column name here like we want roll number surname from student where let's say let's say name is equal to Ritu okay so our condition is based on name but we are displaying roll number and surname here you can see surname is null and roll number is 11 now uh, let me once again show all the records now um, if we want to uh, specify condition on these null values as you can see here then you cannot write like select star from student where surname is equal to let's say null here you can see it displays the last record and even it is not the record it says that the tables contain only these records um let me clear this uh, i want to specify my condition on this particular record you can see the roll number is 11 name is ritu and surname is null i want to display the record which has their surname field null so for that we cannot use is equal to operator we use in keyword select star from student where surname is null here you can see it it is playing the roll number name and surname okay so this is how you can also write specific column name here like roll number only okay so thanks for watching it Hello friends, welcome to programming knowledge. In our previous video, we saw that how to apply specific condition on a selected set of data using where keyword. And if you notice one thing, the example that we have taken, we were only able to specify one condition on a single set of data. But if we talk about real world, it is not this scenario. We have to apply multiple condition on a single set of data. So how do we do that? So for that we have basically two keywords. The first is AND operator and the second is OR operator. In this video we talk about AND and uh, in the next video we will see how to use OR. So first let us see how to use AND keyword in the terminal. So open your terminal or command prompt. MySQL Oh, okay 
my server is uh, start my SQL server okay here we go again okay so database is and here we have data test database and let us see which are the tables here as you can see we have created a student table so let's select star from okay so we have this many of records and now uh, i want to uh, select the data uh, who has a roll number greater than 12 okay so we write select star from student where roll number is greater than 12 okay here you can see now in our case we don't only want that the roll number is greater than 12 we also apply one more condition that the roll number should be greater than 12 but less than 16 so understand this is not one condition this is basically a two condition that we want to apply on this set of data the first one is the roll number should be greater than 12 and the second one is the roll number should be less than 16 okay so we write select star from student where roll number is greater than 12 and roll number is less than 16 here you can see the three rows which has a roll number of 16, 17 and 18 is disappeared now because we applied two conditions. The first one is greater than 12 and the second one is less than 16. Now, uh, whenever we can specify as many as condition as we want and remember one thing, the result of this entire condition becomes true only when all the conditions that we have specified are true if even if any one of them uh, is uh, you know a false condition then the entire condition will become false so we can uh, take one more example like select star from student where roll number here you can see um, now we want uh, this record this region and this one also okay so first one has roll number of 10 and the second one has roll number of 12 so we specify where roll number greater than or equal to 10 so till this it will capture both of these record 10 and 12 because both have roll number greater than 10 or equal to greater than or equal to 10 now we specify the second condition 
in which we want the surname is equal to Makwana. Surname is equal to okay. So now what will happen? This condition is true for both of the bridging, but the second condition, which is for the surname that we have specified, uh, will be false for this particular record because uh, this particular record doesn't match the surname that we have specified. So it will show us uh, only one record, the first one. Okay, let us see. As you can see, now let us specify the condition for all the columns. Select star from student where roll number let's say greater than 13 and name is equal to let's say Alex and surname is equal to Russo okay so as you can see it display only one record which is this one because this is the only record that match all all of the three conditions that we have specified here. okay so let us close this and open mysql workbench okay so here we have roll number name and surname so first use data test now select we want to select specific column here so as we we saw in our previous videos we can write the name of the column roll number let's say surname from student where roll number is greater than 15 okay so this is only one condition now apply second condition via and keyword and roll number is less than or equal to 17 now what will happen uh, this record is matched with our both the condition 16 lies between 15 and 17 uh, 17 also equal to 17 and 18 does not match this second condition it matches the first condition it is greater than 15 but it is not less than or equal to 17 then the last record 18 and capri will be disappeared and we will see only these uh, two of record okay as you can see 16 and 17 uh, now mm, let's try something else select roll number now we will select only roll number okay select roll number from student where name is equal to let's say bridging and surname is equal to Makwana okay so 
uh, if you remember uh, there is only one record of this condition so uh, it will display the roll number of that record as we can see so uh, this is all about n given you can specify as many as condition you want with the help of n keyword and it will display the record if all of the condition that you have specified are true so thanks for watching in our next video we will see how to use or keyword hello friends welcome to programming knowledge in our previous video we saw that how to use n keyword to specify multiple conditions on a given set of data and in this video we will see how to use or keyword so before going into further let us first understand what is the main difference between n keyword and or keyword as we saw early in our video n keyword uh, will give the output only if all the conditions that we have specified becomes true but it is not the case with or keyword or keyword will still display the output even if there is only one condition which holds true the condition become false only when all the condition that we have specified becomes false okay so let us see with the help of an example let us first open terminal So database is so tables okay first use database sorry okay then so tables so we have select star from okay so now let us write select star from student where roll number is greater than 10 and name is equal to between okay so as you can see we write and keyword and I press enter and it will show only one record which is this one now let us fire the same query but uh, this time we will replace the end keyword with the or keyword and see what will be the changes in the output as you can see it will display basically the whole table let us uh, make some changes here greater than 12 we write greater than 15 we use and keyword here first and, and there is no data which match this condition so let us write 11 okay so there is one record and we replace and keyword with on and here you can see so what is the difference between this query and this query in this query we have used and keyword so it will display the record which matches this both the condition so we have only one record that matches with this both condition roll number greater than 11 which is 12 here and name is preaching and uh, wherever 
you can see here uh, we have used or keyword which says that the roll number either roll number can be greater than 11 or name can be bridging or both can be roll number 11 and name is bridging so it will display the records which matches either of one condition or both the condition or all the condition that you have specified so this is the main difference between n keyword and or keyword or keyword will uh, display the output uh, in which even if there is one condition is true and the condition will become false in the case of or keyword only when all the condition that you have specified becomes false so let us uh, see one more example select let's say name from student where roll number is greater than 15 let's say or roll number is less than or equal to 17 let's say okay Basically, what we're trying to say here that either the roll number should be greater than 15. So it will display uh, 15, 16, 17, and 18, or roll number less than 17, which is 17, 16, 15, 14, 12, 11, 12. So basically, it will display the whole table itself because uh, the both the condition matches with this uh, output okay so let us close it open my SQL workbench okay so let's fire this query select roll number from student select roll number let's say select star from student where name is equal to bridge and assign name is equal to okay display only one record now we change this end keyword with our keyword now it will display two records first one is name region so it specified region for the first record this this condition is also match and this condition is also match and for the second record the first condition is matches but the second one is not but we don't have problem here because we specified or keyword and it means that we want either of one condition becomes true okay and with the help of or keyword also we have specified as many as condition as we want let us uh, take one more example select roll number surname from student where let us see we specify <laughs> roll number greater than 11 and roll number less than 15 or let's say less than or equal to 15 or name is equal to Chain. let us make uh, 11 here or 9 here okay so understand what this query means 
what is the role of these brackets here so we put brackets to give more importance to this condition so uh, whenever we fire this query the first of all sql checks for this condition roll number 9 and roll number less than or equal to 11 so we have used and keyword here so this become true only when this both the condition matches okay so roll number is 9 and a roll number less than or equal to 11 and then uh, whatever the output uh, of this condition is combined with this condition name is equal to bridge end, but here we have or keyword so if this condition this whole condition becomes true only when both the condition become true and that true condition will combine with this condition so let us see what's the output okay so roll number 9 and roll number 11 so we have one more condition here uh, name is equal to bridge end. so let us first see roll number greater than 9 and roll number less than 11 matches these records or not yes 10 is lies between 9 and 11 11 is also lies between 9 and 11 uh, but 12 is not lies with this con uh, within this condition but we have used or keyword here and this record has name is equal to bridge end let us see let's put star here so that you can see here this is bridge end so this condition is matches and we put or condition here yeah? so it doesn't matter if it becomes true or false okay so this is how you can combine multiple conditions with or keywords thanks for watching it Hello friends, welcome to programming knowledge. In our previous videos, we saw that how to apply multiple condition on a single set of data using AND and OR keyword. And in this video, I will show you how to display records in sorted manner. So let us first uh, see how to do it in a terminal. Okay, so open your terminal. Okay, show databases. Mm, we will be using data test database. Sorry, data test. Okay. And which are the tables that we have? Student table. Select star from student. Okay. Let us for instance some more records. Okay. Insert into student values, let's say five mark two. Listen 
Elizabeth Bini Okay, so we have inserted two record. I want this table to be sorted according to according to the name. Okay, so what will we do is we will use order by keyword. Select star from student order by name okay that's it and as you can see it is sorted uh, uh, and it will and it displays the uh, name alphabetically first a l x l x b c e l m r now i want to sort it sort the table according to this roll number okay so we just write roll number here as you can see so by default it sorted uh, uh, ascending order and but if we want to sort it in descending order then we can also do that we just need to specify D E S C keyword. Okay. Now you can see. We can also uh, give multiple uh, column names in order by field. Let's say roll number and name. Okay. So as you can see. So let's just close it and open MySQL workbench. Okay, so select. Start from that student where roll number is greater than 14 and we want to order by it using the roll number itself let's say okay as you can see 15 comes first 16 17 and 18 now we want it in descending order so just write dsc and you can see 18 17 16 15 now i want it to short according to its surname As you can see, it is alphabetically. Uh, let us try one more example. Select only name from student where Roll number is less than or equal to 15. Order by roll number, let's say. Here you can see Elizabeth, let us okay uh, let us open one more uh, sql
okay so you can match select star from student okay here you can see elizabeth has role number two mark has five bridging has ten ritu eleven and so on if we are uh, descending and if we show uh, name in descending order ok Lily you can see Lily has the highest number roll number 15 which we specify here and it comes first because we have specified descending order here ok so that's how you can or display your records in ascending and descending order. Thanks for watching it. Hello friends, welcome to programming knowledge. In this video, I will show you how to use limit keyword in query language in MySQL. It is a very small topic actually. Consider a scenario where you don't need to show all the records present in your database. Instead of it, you want to show a specific amount of data. So for that, we can use limit keyword. We can set a limit up, uh, and uh, MySQL server will display only those amount of records. Okay. So let us first open your terminal. show databases okay so use data test and now show tables so as you can see we have one table here stone table uh, let's fire some query select star oh show them uh, as you can see we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 records uh, it display here 10 rows so now we don't need to display all the 10 records now i want that the server will display only 5 records okay so you write select star from student and limit the number of records that you wanted to display five as you can see five rows it will display only five rows uh, if you write two then it will display only two one if you write the number of records which is higher than the number of records present in your database then it will show all the records okay so let me just close it and open my SQL workbench okay so here you can see total 10 records now select star from student where let's say roll number is greater than 12 okay here you can see total five rows uh, are written and i want to display only three records so i set limit to three okay here you can see three rows return and it will display three records now uh, 
let us take one more example select name and surname from student where roll number is greater than 12 or let's say name is equal to Alex okay let me just um, write 16 here and then let me just remove it select name surname from student where roll number greater than 16 or name is equal to Alex so it displays three records okay now I want only this Alex Russo so I set limit is one so it will display only one record as you can see so this is how you can set limit for your record to be displayed on the screen thanks for watching it